Today on Judge Faith, former roommates with unending excuses battle it out over unpaid bills and damaged property. He told me after I moved, she wasn't going to rent it out anymore. Well, she rented it out anyway, and that roommate is suing her also. She put the stove back together. I went to use my stove, and it blew up in my face like a firecracker. No, stop, because this is when I start to get annoyed, because now you're just trying to come up with something to say. And later, a producer and his artist with different understandings of getting paid asked the court to decide their disagreement. I'll open a lot of doors for him. He wouldn't be able to get some of the exposure and meet the people he have met without me. If I'm right, you right. If I make it, you make it. When I get straight, you straight. Let me think about this. Is that a contract? If I'm right, you right. Faith Jenkins. Her distinguished legal career began when she graduated first in her law school class. She quickly became a tough New York City prosecutor and then a preeminent legal analyst on cable news. And now she's the judge in her own courtroom. Her cases are real and her rulings are final. She is Judge Faith. Plaintiff Beatrice Tolliver says the defendant was a difficult roommate and that's why she survived only a few weeks in the dirty home. She's suing for the return of a deposit. Defendant Erica Martin says she doesn't know because Beatrice destroyed her property and sent her obscene text messages. She's countersuing for damages to a stove and refrigerator, harassment, and pain and suffering. All rise, court is in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Please be seated. Your Honor, the litigants have been sworn in. This is the case of Tolliver versus Martin. Thank you, Juan. Beatrice Tolliver? Yes, ma'am. You are suing the defendant, Erica Martin? Yes, Your Honor. For $595 for the return of a security deposit? Yes, ma'am. And you are countersuing Ms. Martin for $2,500. You say the plaintiff owes you for harassment, pain and suffering, a stove and a refrigerator? Yes. Okay, so why don't we start from the beginning? I take it from your papers that you lived with Ms. Martin for a while. Why don't you tell me about that living arrangement and when it started? Well, it started like November 2015. I was looking for a place to stay. So I looked in the paper and she said it was a nice, clean, pretty room and all this, this stuff. When I got there, it was, it was kind of messy, but she said she was cleaning up. I okay, gave her let, let me ask you this. Now, this is a room in an apartment or a house? Um, it's a house. A duplex, actually. Okay, you were living by yourself? Yes. And how much were you renting the room for? $5.95. And you asked for a security deposit of $5.95? Yes. And that's what she's suing you for because you kept that security deposit? Yes, for okay. a open scope. Go ahead. Okay, so when I move in there, when the day I'm moving in, when I have something, I have just one pack of meat I was gonna cook that day. When I go to the stove, it's got a pot on it, and, she, and Erica tells me that the pot is on the eye because it's broken. I didn't. So when I lift up the stove, when the thing is like just full of grease, and I, I text her, I told her, I said, hey, this is like a fire hazard. It's a mess in here. So I took a paper towel and I tried to get some of the grease out of it so I could cook. So I cook and the stove is just so, it's all messed up. It's burning my food, just raggedy little stove. So I said, after that, I was decided I'm not going to cook over here no more. And then she tells me the stove is broke and it's not working and it's, it's about to blow her and up. You, and you broke it? That's what she's trying to say at that time. So how many days had you been there at this point? Uh, probably about a week or so. So what happens with the stove? Because you're countersuing for the stove. Yes. Ms. Tolliver went to soak my stove in water for two to three days. I came home right. from work. My burners were off of my stove, and my stove was sitting in water about this thick. She put the stove back together. I went to use my stove, and it blew up in my face like a firecracker. If that had been my kids, my kids would have been burned. Were there flames? Was there a fire? There was flames, no fire. So it must have blew out or something because it stayed in the on position. I left it up to her. I said, you could call an electrician because I'm not prepared to take care of this expense right now. She said, go and disconnect it with your hands. I said, I'm not doing that. So what happened to the stove? It was broken? After she soaked it in water, it did not work, yes. Okay, so you had to get a new stove? Um, no. So I did not get a new stove yet because I've been busy. I don't cook much in my home. She did something where she rigged it to one burner to work. That's what she told me, that one burner is working and she was still cooking. You say that the uh, stove is broken. What proof do you have of that besides your word yes, today? I have the um, receipt from the electrician. It blew up in no. his face as well and he was very upset. And you think it's because she soaked the... How old is the no. stove? Um, it's probably a 1994 or 5 model, maybe. That's a really old stove. 
But it worked, Your Honor, before she moved in my home. No, Your Before Honor, it was so thick. Did you want her to buy you a brand new stove? And, yeah, because your 1994 stove it. And the out? electrician showed me properly how to clean it. He said, you have to lift it up. When you soak mm -hmm. it in water down there, you have to lift up the top because that's where the wiring is connected. You also say she, she owes you $50 for the refrigerator. What's that about? Yes, the refrigerator, it has no handle on it because she was slamming things around and she broke, broke the handle it. on the Did you yeah. break the handle on the refrigerator? No, Your Honor, I did not touch what the happened? refrigerator. I don't know, this is the, you know what? After I started asking for my deposit from her, that's when I heard about the refrigerator and that's when I heard about the stove. What proof do you have that she broke the handle on the refrigerator? The electrician gave me an estimate on it and I, I I also told This her, has nothing to do with the refrigerator. This is only about the stove. What proof do you have about the refrigerator? You don't have proof? He forgot to put that in there. Um, I could contact him and have him. No, no, assess. no. You're, you're here today. This is your day in court. You gotta have your evidence with you. I have text. We going back and forth. Let she me told see the me, text messages. She told me that the, uh... You're suing for $1,000 for harassment and $1,000 for pain and suffering? What's that about? Yes, because she called me multiple times at work. She called... I, I told her that we needed about to... About what? Her security deposit? Yes. I told her that the stove is... She left. Nothing happened. She upped and moved to a new house. She just left me with the broken repairs. And so you think because she was calling you too much, she, she owes you $2,000 now for harassment and mm -hmm. pain and suffering? I think it's something right here. We were but, in, um... Okay, I'll give it to you. Yes, I was at work. She was calling multiple times, Your Honor. Back to back to back. She was texting me things like, you're gonna um, give me my money in full. February 1st, she sends you a text. Hey, Erica, you can mail the check for the deposit to this post office box in Sacramento. I didn't reply because I didn't know that she was out of the okay, home. Okay, no, 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 stop. Because this is when I start to get annoyed. Because now you're just trying to come up with something to say. Because you don't reply for 14 days and she texts you again. So for 14 days, you didn't know she was gone? For 14 days, your response is, I didn't know she moved out? Because I don't for see four, her. She asked you for her security deposit. You don't even reply and say, what are you talking about? What do you mean, your security deposit? What, did you leave? She was calling, Your Honor, and we spoke on the phone. Because I know how people are. People are always texting on their phone. Not once that she sends you a text. Text, you're telling me instead of replying to a text, you're having phone conversation. Coming up, do text messages tell a different story? She repeatedly is asking you, give me my money, and you respond with, replace my stove and my fridge. She's supposed to replace your refrigerator? And later, a music producer who parted ways with his artist demands a payment for his efforts. We agreed upon him, you know, paying me back for this. Not just him, everybody's gonna wanna signify their spot before something bigger happens in front of them. And you are that something bigger. Yeah, I'm about to be that something bigger. Plaintiff Beatrice Tulliver says Erica took advantage of her kindness. She's suing for the return of a deposit. Defendant Erica Martin says she doesn't know because Beatrice destroyed her property. She's countersuing for damages to a stove and refrigerator, harassment, and pain and suffering. She told me after I moved, she wasn't going to rent it out anymore. Well, she rented it out anyway, and that roommate is suing her also. Is that true? Um, I have proof. I'm going to say uh, that's a I yes. Have, have I'm going to say that's a yes based on your body I'll language. You. you can't do this. You can't have people move in pay security deposits, and then when they leave, you keep all their money. Because by law, just so you know, you're required to in a certain number of days. Even if you're keeping a portion, you are required to return the remainder of the security deposit to her. I offered by it. law, I don't yeah. care what you offered, I'm telling you what you didn't do. I'm judging you by your actions, not by your words. <laughs> So she repeatedly is asking you, give me my money, give me my money, and you respond with, replace my stove and my fridge. She's supposed to replace your refrigerator? Your Honor. For breaking the handle? That was She's was supposed working, to replace working, your stove? Was your working. Honor, that Come was on now. after Come numerous on. No, conversations you stop with this. her. You gotta stop this. Because what it looks like you're doing is you're looking for a reason not to return her money. That's what Even it looks like she you're broke doing. The stove? She paid you $595. That stove was over 20 years old. I don't know if she broke it. $2,000 for harassment and pain and suffering. That's what you're asking for? 
the number one thing you need to do is learn the law if you're going to be a landlord. You do not have the right nor the authority to keep someone's security deposit. If you're keeping it a portion for damages, then you keep a portion for damages. The law requires you to return the rest. You didn't do that. You kept the entire $595, and you know why? Because I think you did so in bad faith. I think you wanted the money, you just wanted to keep it, and you took the opportunity to do so. Well, that ends today. My judgment is for the plaintiff. $595, your counterclaim is dismissed. I feel that Judge Faith really was right on spot because it was the truth and she was, it was good, it was honest. And I deserve it. I'm not happy with her ruling. She didn't listen to my side of the case at all. And she made a judge based upon, I guess, hearsay. Plaintiff Tommy Wright says now that the defendant is becoming successful, he's owed money for helping him get there. He's suing for money owed for studio time, a laptop, and equipment. Defendant Leroy Brown says he owes nothing because the money Tommy spent on his career was mutually beneficial and helped Tommy grow his music contacts. Tommy Wright? Yes, Your Honor. You are suing the defendant Leroy Brown? Yes, Your Honor. And you go by what name? Hunnick K. Hunnick K? Honey K. Honey K. Can I call you Mr. You call Brown? Call me K for short. Okay, K. <laughs> um, you are suing Mr. K for eighteen hundred and thirty-eight dollars. Yes, you say yeah. he owes you for studio time, laptop, and equipment. You say that you were managing his career for a period of time, and you are what kind of artist, sir? Hip hop. Hip hop, okay. And during this time period, you had an agreement that he would reimburse you for certain expenses you were paying, and he breached that agreement, and that's why you're here today? Yes, yeah. Okay, so why don't we start from the beginning? You tell me how you met Mr. K. Uh, well, we met a few years back in Atlanta, and you know, we had a love for music, and we lived in the same neighborhood, and we just been cool ever since. And mm -hmm. when I moved out here to Cali, you know, I was still doing the music thing and heard he came down. What do you mean by doing the music thing? Um, <laughs> I apologize. <laughs> well, you know, I was still networking with music, you know, um, dealing with different artists, um, dealing with different producers and stuff like that. Doing what exactly? Um, well, um, working with the studio, recording, making beats, and getting shows together, performances and stuff like that. So you were working with him in Atlanta. You moved to California. He's still in Atlanta. But what was your working relationship like? What was the agreement between the two of you? Oh, Let's well, know I provided, um, I have my laptop here, and um, I gave him the studio equipment to record on because he's a producer as well. He um, knows how to record himself, and he could do all that. So I had all the equipment so he can record pretty much. And you're saying there was a contractual agreement between the two of you? Not a written, no. Well, it doesn't have to be written. An oral contract is a valid agreement. Yeah. So you say you had an oral contract? Yeah. And what was it? It wasn't necessarily a contract, but it was more like, you know, um, well, I'm that's kind be... of a, That's kind of an important fact, yes. whether or not you had a contract. Yes, well, yeah, I say we did. As far as I was concerned, we agreed upon him, you know, paying me back for this. Um, paying you back for what? Um, for the time and the um, stuff I bought, like the equipment and stuff I bought. And so what's going on now? What, wh how do you end up in court? How um, is his career doing? It's doing well. It's doing well? Yes. And you think it's because of you? Yes. In what Not respect? Not exactly just because of me. Obviously, he has talent. But um, because, you know, I helped push him. I helped him I helped open a lot of doors for him. He wouldn't be able to record some of the songs he has already. Mm -hmm. He wouldn't be able to get some of the exposure and meet the people he has met mm -hmm. without me having to get my laptop out there, without me true? having to get the... Is that mm -hmm. true? It's, it's two sides to a story. I've been doing this my whole life, and I can't take from He has helped in big ways, but currently what's going on now and the people that's getting involved and what they're laying on the table and what he's seeing with his own eyes, not just him, everybody's going to want to signify their spot before something bigger happens in front of them. Mm -hmm. So it's more or less that. And that's, you are that something bigger? Yeah, I'm about to be that something bigger. Mm -hmm. Did you have an agreement with him in the beginning that... First of all, did he spend this money and, and help you buy studio time? Yes, he did. And was there an agreement that you would pay him back? Uh, in general? And to me, no. You never had a conversation and said, I'll pay you back when I, mean, when I make, start making would be, more money? You know, if I'm right, you right. If I make it, you make it. When I get straight, you straight. Let me think about this. Is that a contract? If I'm right, you right. <laughs> if I'm straight, me. you straight. 
We both straight. If I'm straight, we both straight. Yeah, you know, when he got his Does money Does that up. mean there was a meeting of the minds? Coming up on Judge Faith, the future music producer learns a hard lesson about agreements between friends. When he first approached you and asked you to reimburse him, what was your response to that? Um, I doubt you, but not at this moment. Plaintiff Tommy Wright says he wants to get paid for building Kay's career. He's suing for money owed for studio time, a laptop, and equipment. Defendant Leroy Brown says he owes nothing because Tommy got paid in experience. When you say, if I'm right, you right, that means what? If, if, if I'm making Same. money, you're making money? As long as I'm good, you good. Same way your sister or brother tell you or your friend will tell you, if I got it, you got it. It don't necessarily mean I'm going to come out my pocket and pay you this. It means that no matter if I see whatever you're going through, I got you. But you're kind of right now. And he's come to you, and, and he thinks you're right. And he, so he wants a piece of the pie. Do you think that was the agreement? Um, kind of, but not so soon. I mean, it's, if we There boys, was no time frame. There's no this time was a very frame, loose what I'm saying. This arrangement. This is only coming out of, of yeah. what, See, I think I know what's now. going on here. When he first approached you and asked you to reimburse him for some of the money he spent for the studio, what was your response to that? Um, I got you, but not at this moment. A lot of people right now, even besides him, got their hand in before the money is being made, but it's more money that's going to take to make this happen okay. than I have to give right now. So you're not ready, but you plan on paying him back at some point? Yes, I do. You're saying. How old are you? 21. Okay, so you're about to learn your first lesson then mm. as, a, as a person in this position. And you're going to learn it when you're 21 years old so that when you're managing someone else and they're making millions of dollars, you won't be back in court trying to sue for your portion. Because what I have here is a very informal arrangement between two friends. And now you want to come into court and you want me to enforce this informal arrangement. I don't have a problem with oral contracts. They are just as binding as written contracts. But the problem I have with, with this arrangement is, I don't even think the two of you know yourselves what you agreed on. Are you working with him right now? No, not exactly. So he's working with other people. Yeah. And he's sort of moved on, and you're concerned that the investment you made early on in his career, you're now being cut out. Am I Pretty correct? Pretty much, yes. OK. That's what's going on here. What is the equipment you say you purchased for him? I have um, a list of some stuff I got. And he has that equipment? Yes. What is the equipment? Um, Let me see the receipts for your purchases. Well, I don't have exact receipts. This long. What do you have proof of, sir? Um, I have proof. Um, I had um, someone I had book studio time for him. And then I just had some bank transactions. This is insufficient really... proof. The fact that you withdrew money from your account does yeah. not prove to me that you used that money to buy equipment or buy studio time for him. Well, the equipment. What here. is the equipment? It's an audio interface, M-Audio, speakers, microphone, And headphones. he bought those things and you have them? Yes, I do. Again, this is a lesson that you learn. Put everything in writing. Oral contracts are fine, but put your business in writing so that when something like this does come up, you have a track record and say, this was our agreement from the very beginning. This was the money I spent. The fact that you withdrew money from an ATM tells me nothing. I have no idea where that money went. Coming up, Judge Faith Rules. And now, Judge Faith Rules. I'm going to help you out with one aspect of this case today, and that's it. Only because he admits that he has this equipment that you purchased for him. That's it. Everything else you're asking for, you're going to have to eat this. Mm -hmm. And you're going to have to learn this lesson. Because I can't create evidence for you. You really just don't have it. So for you, this is just going to be one of those lessons that you have to learn the hard way. Based on the evidence you submitted about this studio equipment and the depreciated value of it at this point, based on the fact that Mr. K conceded that he has this equipment, I'm going to rule in your favor for a judgment of $500. Good luck to both of you. I see we can still work together. That is my boy. That is my brother. And that little bit of money ain't gonna stop. There's a lot more money on the table. So I'd rather him get that out of the way now. And if, uh, if he feel like that's what he needed, then get that. So you can get your head clear and we can make some real money. For future reference, you know, we could do business together. You know, me and Honey K, he just 
we gotta make sure we have some solid written agreements now and everything set in stone before we really go about our business together. We're always interested in what you have to say about our cases. Write us with your thoughts or comments. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, or my Instagram. I look forward to hearing from you. If you or someone you know has a dispute, don't take the law into your own hands. Let Judge Faith rule on it for you. To submit your case, go to judgefaith.com and tell us your story. See you in court.